those. Um, oh, thanks, G. I always forget to do that before she's here. Um, I, I think I was most intrigued by the simple simplicity of this week's videos, meaning, oh, everyone should know that. But when I listened like deeply, like listening to them talk about um, just uh, what, what was the term they used for um, identifying the name, what you, what you, um, Shauna, help me out. What's it called when you're uh, putting what your prospect is into your CRM? You're giving them, so they might be a past um, buyer. They might be a, a tag. Person. Yeah. So whatever they were tagging them, they used a term in there. But because uh, back in the days when I was using Top Producer, and we're talking about like <laughs> 80s, 90s, even into the 2000s, uh, even now we still have Top Producer. You know, I might pull up one prospect and it might say past buyer 2010. It might say family member. It might say a plus group, meaning they're going to get my newsletters. Those yeah, they're are, in multiple categories. Yeah, mu categories, right. Multiple categories that you can put them in. So that if you search, oh, I want to, I just want to send a note card to everybody that's actually either related to me or what I like to call chosen family, meaning they're like, they're like family. So as you put those in there, and then you, you can start to keep track and you can have as many of them as you want, which is something a lot of people don't do. Oh, past buyer, whatever. Um, I have anniversaries that pop up on my phone all the time for because I was for years putting in house anniversaries or uh, the anniversary of your purchase of a home into my, into my calendar. So I would call those people on that day that it would pop up. I haven't been as good about that lately, but we changed our closing gifts now to... Uh, a $262 gift that sends them fruit every month for a year. And yeah. that's been very, very beneficial because we're getting texts from them. And then we get texts from them, gives me an opportunity to maybe pick up the phone and say, great, I'm so glad you're enjoying the house. You know, who else do you know right now that can use our services and stuff? So does that make sense to everybody? So it is, it is really, um, it's a big deal to make sure you categorize them and thank you. How come I couldn't remember the term categorize, but uh, categorize them properly so that you can always find them because believe me, after you've been doing real estate for a while, you're going to forget who they were, what you did with them. And those reminder categories are really helpful. Um, the then, system I use, you can pull up the month and it has every birthday and house anniversary that's coming that month. Oh, nice. Just like a, like, it looks like a calendar. Oh, okay. How do you do that? Is that the system? Or well, I'm using, I'm using Brian Buffini's referral maker system. I've kind of, I used to use top producer, but top producer is, man, it's, it's very, it's heavy <laughs> yeah. um, to use. Um, so I just wanted to go to something more simple, but I think a lot of them are a lot simpler. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I think that, and then the next, the video that Paul did was talking about all the different reasons or excuses you can use to be in contact. He says, you close a buyer, you should be in contact with them that month then three months then six months, then a year. But I, I got to say that you, especially with a buyer or a seller, even if the seller moved out of your area, they knew people in the area that you, that, um, that they were in and are probably still going to be in contact with them. So it's important that you check in on them on a regular basis. So yeah, the, um, that's very, very important. Uh, there's, there's so much about this, uh, last, this last week that is important, especially as we wind down. I wanted to look, I had a, a reminder here. Hold on one sec. Um, yeah, let's see right here. I'm pulling it up. Give me a second, guys, because it's uh, my computer's a little slow today. Well, either that or the Wi-Fi is. But okay. Yeah. So if we look at they had, um, they're all kind of, you know, the first three are all about using the same, uh, using the same idea, using a CRM, following up with people, and creating raving fans. Those are all, as we know a byproduct of each other, so to speak. You can create a raving fan by doing a little more, going above and beyond. And of course that speaks to figuring out your top 50. 
um, that's really, really a big deal. The, um, let me see, hold on right here. I wanted to see, um, yeah, creating raving fans. And then I was checking to see, did I miss any um, downloads? I don't think I did, but let me, yeah. The 90 day FISBO contact scheduler was a really good download in my opinion. Um, did any of you guys check that out? And, and I know most of you go, oh, no, I didn't check it out because I don't do FISBOs. Believe me, it's something to consider. I listened to a four minute commercial yesterday. You know how a commercial comes on or an ad when you go to watch a YouTube, all right? And somehow they magically know you're a realtor. So yours is all about real estate. And I saw this lady talk for literally four minutes about her, uh, she mostly coaches females in real estate and she's been awarded, you know, top speaker in the female real estate industry or whatever. But she was going on and on, uh, statistically stating stuff that is obvious, like only 90% of the women realtors out there will succeed at a high level. Well, hello, only 10% of the realtors in general will succeed at a very high level. So it's not just women, but she was advertising this course that she was going to let you have for free. And what's the one secret that you'll use that you'll never have to call a FISBO or an expired or knock on a door or, or uh, you know, all of these things. And she spent hours, like not, it seemed like hours, the whole thing was only four minutes long, talking about how ridiculous all of those lead generation systems are. And I tell people, go where you want to go, but you got to lead generate, right? It's as simple as that. Um, I uh, sat at a recruiting, uh, at, a, at a lunch where I was supposed to be talking to these five people that would all want to come to EXP under people that are under me. And uh, that's why I love that this ramp thing is only EXP people. I can explain this to you. So that day at the table was a guy who was on salary with Keller Williams as the head of KWYP which was like kind of like YPN, but it's KWYP, but he had a salary. So it was a position over seeing this group of people in KW, thousands and thousands across the United States. Um, and then there was another guy who uh, was regular real estate agent at, at Sotheby's. And then, and then there was these other three coaches. They were all female coaches. One coached on all of the basics door knocking, prospecting, lead generation, follow-up, tracking. And then the other two were literally world-renowned uh, social media trainers who didn't only train in the real estate field. They trained in all fields. They just had the majority of their customers being real estate. And they were both thinking of getting their license, um, mostly because of the agent attraction part of eXp. But when I was listening to them about the different ways each and every one of them coached agents to get business was amazing. Amazing. Like such a variety. And the three of them were best friends. And not one of them was ridiculing the way the other one coached people to get business. Because it goes back to everything works, nothing doesn't. It's as simple as that. Pick something. Pick something that you feel comfortable doing or less uncomfortable than you do doing other things and then go for it. So I was, I was definitely uh, humbled and inspired the entire trip. Um, and I wasn't going to come home originally till Friday because I really wanted to do, but, but, you know, we had a lot of things going on here, including our dog's been ill. So it said, you know, Casey couldn't go. She normally goes because she was here babysitting the, the dog. But um, I'd say overall, guys, this is definitely, this chapter really brought, uh, this week, I should say, brought this all to mind about the variety of ways to do business. Now, if you, um, uh, let's see, where is it? I love the, uh, look over that 90 day disclosure if you didn't, that 90 day FISBO contact scheduler. Uh, but it basically, that whole uh, session 54 talks about new ways to find business. And I can assure you that there are, uh, in the old days, I don't know if any of you, you're all too young to remember something called Carter's liver pills. Um, and they were these tiny little pills in a jar would come with a lot of them and uh, they would get advertised on television. Anyway, so the, the analogy used to be when I was a kid is there's more ways to lead generate than, than Carter has liver pills. And, uh, and that's very, very realistic. Um, you know, I, my, I told you guys before, my uncles used to have magnetic signs on their Cadillacs and Mercedes. 
magnetic signs. It used to drive me nuts. But every week at family dinner, some, one of them would say how someone would knock on their window when they were in the car and say, I, can I talk to you about real estate real quick? And a number of people who say, because they have their name tag on when they go to the grocery store, somebody will talk to them. It's over and over. I mean, there's a million different things that are simple, right? I can remember the first time in 1992 that someone told me I should phone solicit uh, divorce attorneys, right? Scared the crap out of me. The word attorney scared the crap out of me, right? And I can remember for a few years back in the uh, late 90s where I was mailing postcards to uh, um, financial planners. Anything, right? Just do something, be consistent about it. So lots of new ways to find business. If you guys ever want to challenge me on that, um, you know, or, or we have a call about it, we will. I want to remind you also that la next week, covers week 12, which is the last week of the, uh, of uh, week 12 is the wet last week of videos for ramp. And then on the, uh, on, um, that'll be the 19th. And then on, on December 3rd, um, on December 3rd, then we are going to um, do a wrap up call for the whole program. Okay, you guys getting this down? And on December 17th, we're going to do a launch call for the next ramp. Uh, that's probably not, I do highly recommend. Uh, Ryan, you and you and Carolyn still in Vegas or no? No, I got, uh, I got home last night and oh. uh, we got a little busy this morning, lost track of time, so. No worries, I just wondered if you guys are still there. Sean's, Sean's over at the airport, so. Cool, are you still in Vegas? No, huh? I got. I came home yesterday afternoon. I was home by four, three thirty, four, something like that. So. Nice, really cool event though. I like so much information. It really made me fall in love with EXP as a company, not just our model. That's awesome. Yeah, good people. Yeah, yeah it was amazing. Uh, we have a new company called Success Lending. Uh, that's um, that is really going to do some amazing things. And you might wonder. Well, I have my loyalties to my lender but I would be surprised if there was somebody on this call who didn't own stock yet, right? So imagine that your stock was going up because you were using the lender, right? Um, right. And, I mean, and $10,000 incentive to bring over a lender is not too bad either. What was that? I don't, I didn't hear that. Yeah, there's a incentive for recruiting loan officers, uh, $10,000. They were saying if you bring over a loan officer to success lending. Wow. And then I think they're talking about unveiling a program within the loan officers to similar to agent attraction. I don't know all the details of that part of it, but no, I'd heard yeah, that. I, yeah, I think they're working on it. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So, and a lot of you say, oh, I'm loyal to my lender. Well, get your lender to move to success lending. Uh, and um, yeah, who knows? That might be a good thing. So, um, there's, yeah, there's, so the, I don't really want to take the focus off that, but I do want to remind you all that there's so much learning going on out there. And what we all do, I do too, is we get laser focused on what's going on right here. My deals, my transactions, my team. And we forget that there's so much going on in the world. And um, I told somebody the other day, and it's already happened for this convention. Oh, I said it in a meeting uh, on, um, on Tuesday at the convention, there was one of our ladies had a big two room suite. She had about 40 people in there and she asked me to drop in. And, and I told people, I said, my first convention was 1990 when I went to NAR. And, um, and every year, including that year and now this year too, because I've already gotten it, is I've received enough commission dollar from referrals to pay for the entire trip, usually more, okay? And it's a matter of being focused about why you're there, not going, yay, I'm in Vegas, you know. Um, I, I didn't gamble once, but I had a friend there or, you know, just one of the people in my organization that heard that I used to play blackjack. I didn't play a lot, but whenever my family would go to Tahoe or Reno or Vegas, I'd play blackjack. That's the only thing I was really good at. And, um, and she said, oh, teach me how to play blackjack. I've always wanted to learn. I didn't even have time to do that. I think three times we decided we'd go to the tables and I just kept getting stopped on the way. So, um, the, but every time I got stopped, it was worthy of the stop. We, uh, me and two people from here, from the Bay Area that I brought to the company, 
bumped into each other. Oh, let's grab breakfast tomorrow morning early because I got a busy day. And so we go to grab breakfast. The plate, the line, the line was super long to get into breakfast. And they, it was three of us and they gave us like a table for six. And Gene Frederick is in there. I think most of you know who Gene Frederick is. And he's got a buddy with them. And he literally just walked right into the restaurant without getting in line just to see if there was someone he knew that he could share a table with. So of course we invite him. He goes, you guys got room at your table? I'm like, you got a name on the list? He goes, no, I was just seeing if I knew somebody. Like, <laughs> so you end up, and then the guy that he was sitting, that he brought with them was, ended up being super interesting. So it was really good. Uh, and you guys got to think about that. What's the, what's my intention when I go to a, an event? What do I intend to get out of it? And then whatever you do intend to get out of it is usually what you do get out of it. But if you go with no intention, then you walk away going, oh, well, it was okay. I didn't, I didn't get that much out of it. So. Before the build event, um, Casey, actually, I was in a meeting with her and she had this whole like process for when you go to events of what to intend and whatnot. And if anyone wants me to share that, it was uh, really awesome to look over and think about for the events. That's awesome to hear. Yeah. Thank you for reminding me about that, Carolyn. She does have that process, but I can remember uh, going to some of her new skin uh, meetings with her when we first started and she was trying to recruit me into new skin. It was when we were still, you know, first dating and I'd sit there like this, you know, she'd go, what are you getting out of it? Yeah. Good. Some of those speakers aren't so good. You know, and she'd go, really? because you're a professional speaker, are you listening to how they speak? Or are you listening to what they're talking about? Like she was right here in my face. So I learned that I shouldn't be, because I am a speaker, sometimes I catch myself listening to the way they speak and how they deliver as opposed to listening to the content. Nobody was getting paid to speak there at, at her new skin. They were all people who had succeeded highly. That didn't mean they were a professional speaker, but man, it changed me completely because all I'd started to do after that was just listen to the content. What's the content? Not the ums and the ahs and the, uh, maybe the, the speaker being a little nervous, but what did they do to succeed? So, and ever since then, it's really changed my outlook on events quite a bit. So, so that's good. All right, now the last, uh, let's see, the last uh, session uh, after that was, uh, let me go back here real quick. New ways to find um, business was, oh, that was it. It was the first four and then the review. So the, um, but if you didn't see that 90 day, that might encourage you. Cause I did have about a two or three year period where I worked on FISVOS for a while and I got a few, I don't think I was breaking any records but when it worked, it worked good, right? We did all kinds of things. Um, I remember using a script where I would just call FISVO and go, hi, I know you're selling your home by owner. I'm not calling you today to ask you to list your home with me. I just want to see if it's okay if I drop by and take a look at it for myself because I have a lot of buyers that I work with on a regular basis in that area. I do want to ask you though, are you willing to pay a commission if I am able to bring you a buyer? And they might say no. And I go, well, you know, for me, it's more about my clients. So if it's something they like, I still want them to see it. So you go, right? And you take that. Then what I would do just before I would go is in the state of California, and the ma majority of you are in the state of California, not you, Nancy, but, um, but the stack of paperwork in the state of California is like about that high. And it doesn't matter if you have a realtor or not, the majority of those forms are, are mandatory by the state, not by the state if you have a realtor, but by the state if you sell a home. So I would take them a packet like that and I'd write sample across the top of it and I'd paperclip it and, and then I would just nonchalantly say, oh, I thought since I was coming over, I'd bring you this stack of paperwork that's required for you when you sell your home in the state of California. And do you know how many times they go, this stack's required? Uh, yeah, uh-huh. And they go, and I think you can buy them online or something. Those are just samples, but let me, let me know if you have any questions. <laughs> that was not something I thought up, right? Somebody else thought it up. I taught, I learned, I used it, right? So Did you What's that? Did you print the ones that actually say sample? Because yeah, I know that. Back, yeah, back then they didn't have them. That was the, about the late '90s, early 2000s. But I bought a rubber stamp, and we just stamp each page with the word "sample" right in the middle of it, right? So, um, yeah. So it was pretty. It was pretty cool uh, to do that. A lot of times uh, when I was doing expireds, um, we would 
when you wanted to do expired, you either stayed up till a little after midnight because most listings expired at 1159. So if you stayed up a little past midnight, you, you knew what expired that day, right? And so you either did that or you got up at five in the morning, ran what expired, and then we would make up these packets. We were only doing maybe one or two a day, and then we would drive the packet and drop it on their front porch before 6 a.m. so that when they came out of their house to go to work, they saw the packet, you know? And our letter said, last night at midnight, your home expired off of the MLS, you know, or stuff like that. So, so there was a lot of different things you could do. And you could, I mean, I'm definitely not the instructor on FISBOs and expires that are, are much better. I actually know for a fact that there's a lot of FISBO and expired classes in the cloud uh, that are recorded and put there for, uh, you know, for posterity. So feel free to use them. Okay. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do is uh, talk to you guys a little bit about uh, the time invested. I don't have an emotional investment into this because uh, I'm not coaching you on a daily basis or anything. All I do have is an emotional investment in you having succeeded as a result of it. Has it changed your habits? Those kinds of things. And as you look at us being in the you know second to last week of the of the videos you have to ask yourself and say to yourself honestly i've watched the videos i've taken notes uh the workbook i love the workbook uh i i had been using it just with a pdf uh, uh online pdf of it but when i got my beautiful 50 dollars color workbook i really like it like it gives you blanks and if you fill in the blanks then you're learning as you follow along and I really liked it. So I'd love to hear some feedback from you guys and we don't need to go a whole hour if we don't have to. So let me know your thoughts. Yeah, I, I found the, the class to be very helpful. Um, as we talked at the beginning, not feeling like I'm gonna be diehard into the, the seller lister listing um, from a real estate standpoint, cause doing a lot more of the investing and uh, what I think this class has helped identify is in the beginning, I felt like a squirrel going every which way. Um, and I can't remember what week it was where it was kind of like the Venn diagram of kind of figuring out what you love, what you want to do and kind of what makes you happy. Um, and that was very, I guess, eye opening internally to go through that process and be like, I don't really like all these things. This is the part I really like about real estate. So this is what I should be focusing on. And, and kind of not go after all the other peripheral stuff and focus on on that aspect as opposed to all encompassing things. Sean, that is so strong and so important. It's it's mind boggling to me how somebody uh, I used to teach this one kind of farming called relationship farming, and the guy that taught it to me uh, was a former Bank of America assistant vice president, and. I mean, he was a lanky, tall, white guy. I don't mean just white guy, but like almost see-through white, like he was white. And his, he succeeded at a very high level farming 423 homes in a, uh, in a uh, subdivision that was 80% English as a second language, 80%. And there was other realtors telling him, oh, you'll never succeed in there. It's mostly Afghani, right? And he's like, uh, people sell the houses, you know, you know, and you know how working for a corporation is, right? You're, you know, politically correct, the whole bit. Um, so he didn't su subscribe to any of that. He said, people are people, you know, and he was like within six months, he was probably the top listing agent in that area. And people were, you know, after a year, he was the guy people would call if they had a buyer for that subdivision, right? Um, yeah. And no, I, it, it's true. Like, um, before I moved down to Florida, I was in an area in Ashburn, Virginia, that is predominantly Middle Eastern. Uh, and it was eye-opening when I went to sell the house, like the position of your door made a huge difference in the desirability within that community because you had to understand their customs and traditions. Uh, you know, not just, the, hey, this is a gorgeous house and a gorgeous, it had to like face a certain direction uh, because that meant something in their culture. Yeah. Well, and, and that's, that's so important, but I, I think the biggest thing about what you said is, you know what you want to do, 
you know what you don't want to do, focus on what you do want to do, and the money will come. Like you'll be happy, you'll be excited, you'll be more energized. And then every time you go to do something that you're not really excited about, right, then you end up getting back drugged down into the sort of the pit. So good for you. Yeah. Believe me, uh, you know, be doing the, the, the cold calling and stuff as, as a, like in my 20s through through most of my 20s. So you know, the, the part of the, this call and, and, and for everyone is different. When you, when you had the parts about uh, developing call list and all that, I, I, I could like internally cringe because I was like, I remember doing the cold calling sessions. Yeah. Uh, first thing out of college was like, um, uh, Amer it was American Express Financial Advisors then, but it's Ameriprise now. Yeah. And I remember getting on those call sessions and I was like the cold calling and, you know, it's not meant for everyone. It's, right. um, and so it was great in that sense. So, I mean, there are still different things that I'm taking from, from this, like the, the, the CRMs and all that. I still got to talk to real estate agents because most of what I want to do is finding off-market deals uh, in this contingent market. So you have to have relationships with lenders, with, uh, you know, other real estate agents and in, in to find all these deals off-market. So even the class has been very uh, educational in that sense. Awesome. All right. Anybody else? Okay. Um, I have. Oh, go ahead. I, I was just going to say I have. You, you had said something in one of our classes prior. I think you've said it a couple times, but I have found it to be very true that if you're just doing something every day, you know, it, you know, some activities that even if that the business doesn't come from that particular activity, it seems to come. Uh, from somewhere, and 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 I think as you put more effort in to your daily activities, things start happening, and whether it's from what you're doing or for some from something else. Yeah. Well, and that's what I've been doing. So I've been staying active, and I'm I'm finding that to be true that I'm 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 getting business from other places, even if it's not from where I was uh, focusing my attention on. Yeah, where you were prospecting at, it comes from. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, I, watched, I watched a movie last night that was uh, really intriguing and it had a couple of lessons. I always say, if you're looking for them, they're in there. But definitely about the word providence, you know, that, you know, when, when you set an intention, providence moves to, is in a William H. Murray quote, um, that you have this intention and it was about a safe cracker. Um, it's called Army of Thieves. And it was really cool uh, that this guy, that his, he, he spent his whole life uh, learning about a guy named Hans Wagner. And I, I don't know, it sounds like maybe the guy, it's true. I don't know if there's a real guy named Hans Wagner. I haven't looked it up yet. But he knew everything there was to know about Hans Wagner, who created these amazing safes, four of them, uh, that were almost impenetrable impenetrable and if you messed up a couple of times trying to get in it incinerated the contents of the safe um so it was really really cool to see this idea of commitment intention right hey, you you watch that that it was a tv series right like that's on netflix or something what you're talking about no this was just a movie last night that was done in 2021 by netflix um, it was a movie because I know like they're trying to break into multiple saves, right? Like it, it's it's a um, not dubbed English, but I, I started watching it. So I got through the part where he broke into the first safe. It, it oh. is very interesting. Like, so I started watching it you, and maybe you, I stopped watching it. Maybe it is a movie and I just stopped at the first one and needed to continue through. Well, you so you said you uh, uh, it was dubbed English. Mine was regular English like. Uh, well, not dubbed. I'm. Oh. It was a foreign film. Like the English was, oh, like you know what I'm saying. Like yeah. for the movie, right? That's the one you were watching. I yeah. I can't remember the yeah. Yeah, it was this, very interesting. Loved it, yeah, and it was very kind of mind-boggling about how how he knew the subject so well. I tell people all the time. They say, you know, you work really hard in your real estate sales business. You work long hours and stuff like that. And I say my ability to be enthusiastic and knowledgeable and committed to just that one subject has really paid off. I know, I know great people who do both loans and real estate. I would never undermine them at all, but I found that there's so much to know in the loan business that I never really want to know or to keep track of that me just doing real estate 
and only focusing on real estate has been very, very rewarding. And people will come to me just because of my knowledge and enthusiasm about the business. Same with this guy. These people just came to him because he was so knowledgeable, enthusiastic about it. You know, he did a video. He was doing these YouTube videos every couple of weeks about safe cracking. And he was nervous on YouTube and everything. And, you know, the lady that reached out to him was the only one who viewed the one person viewed his YouTube. And she's the one who hired him to be a safe cracker. So it was kind of cool. Anyway. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Sean. Appreciate it. Well, there is one um, one saying from, a, and, I, and I have to give credit to a, a, a EXP agent. There's a saying that, that actually sank in this past week with me. Uh, his name is Matt Plummer. And it's probably not his saying, but he didn't give credit to it. So I'm giving credit to him. Mm -hmm. It says, stop making C-plus decisions while praying for an A-plus life. Oh, I like that a lot. And I liked it a lot. Like it sank in, like, you know, a lot of people are like, I'm doing the effort, but it's like the C plus effort, but they expect A plus results. Yes. And, and that's, that, I see that everywhere. It's the same thing as saying, I want this. I want this. And my, my wife used to show me that. She said, but based on results, you're committed to this. Did you get that idea? So she, the word that used to come from this coaching program was based on results, what are you committed to? Well, based on results, you're committed to where you're at exactly right now. That's the results prove the commitment level. If your commitment level was up here, then your results wouldn't be down here. So there's yeah. a saying I really like that's similar that uh, what got you here won't get you there. Yes. And I, that always like resonates with me when I'm like, the life I want, I'm not going to be the same person in that life to achieve all the things I need to be. Like I need to grow into the person that can handle that responsibility and the work that it takes to get there. Um, yeah. I've heard it from a, diff a few different ways and it always like hits me where it's like, gosh, like what got me here was great. I'm so grateful for all the work I put in, but it's not gonna get me to where I need to go. I need to do more, something different. Yeah. I, I believe that so much. And I think the fact that you um, have done what you've done is, is, you know, just speaks volumes for you. So good for you. And for knowing those things, guys, see, the one thing that I remember from Gary Keller all the time was saying, are we learning for the sake of knowing or learning for the sake of doing? And you know, that all, all of the comments that, you know, both Ted and Sean, uh, Ted and Sean and Ryan just made are about I'm learning so that I can know it, but use it to do something with. And today on my Friday coaching call, team coaching, team uh, workman success team training call, where they where we talk about all the coaches are on the call and everybody's learning to be a better coach every Friday. And it said is that everything you know is useless unless you turn it into something that's actionable something that you actually do that makes a difference. So it's the same with these videos that we're watching. So yeah. Conferences, it's similar to what you're talking about. Like I, I, we go to coaching program, other coaching programs and all these things. And it's like, it's so easy to get fired up and hot, like excited about going to work, but it's like, that's only 10% of it. Like the 90% is really just doing something. Like take, take three things out of all the new information you got. And you would, if you do those three things, you'll be, a rock star, but it's, it's hard to put it into action sometimes. Yep. I agree a hundred percent. I mean, as for feedback in the class, like the daily habit tracker, I know that was like really early on. And it's like, I, I, I wish I used it every single day. I don't use it all the time, but it's like the days I'm tracking what I'm doing and I'm writing it down and I'm like, all right, did I do 50 dials? Did I talk to these people Did I role play for at least 30 minutes or an hour? Did I do the full hour? Like, if I can follow the daily tracker and just print it out and get it in front of me, it's like, oh my God, <laughs> that, that would do so much more than like anything else. Yeah. And one of the things you guys could do, or we could all do, I used to do it, but I haven't lately is, and if you've heard me say this before, I apologize for repeating is set six to eight alarms on your phone per day. Um, so for instance, Ryan, your, your alarm might say, I have one that goes off at 11.30 and 12 every day that says uh, gratitude, certainty, gosh, what's it say? <laughs> um, 
uh, it's in my phone, hold on. Um, every single day it says, come on, Rick, where is it? Gratitude and love, certainty and presence. Um, so, you know, that's one, but Ryan, like that saying you just had said about, you know, the, uh, a plus life or whatever that was one. Remember what you said earlier? That's what, uh, uh, Sean said. Sean said. Okay. Uh, but all those sayings you can say, maybe set one for each alarm and have it go off with the words, but a song playing that will bring you back into reality, bring you back into positivity, whatever it is. Uh, you've all had that experience where you're driving down the road and your 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 brow is furrowed, the radio's on, but you're not hearing it. And I've I've said it before. If a, if somebody pulled you over immediately and said, "Why are you like that right now? Why are you like all furrowed brow and grumpy?" You could not explain it because sometimes it just happens, and the part of your brain that covers your moods like that doesn't cover verbal expression. So maybe you couldn't express. <laughs> Is it just Rick that froze up? Right, good, like, good. I, I was like, <laughs> yeah. Think so. so it's so it's just him. Okay. I was like. <laughs> Okay, can you guys hear me? Can hear you now. Yeah, okay, now. Okay, hold on. Let me. I'm on my. Let me get rid of my. Uh, my computer froze up. So. Hold on. Okay. Um. Gina, can you? Turn off. Oh, wait a minute. I got yeah, it. I'm trying to mute you. Hold on one sec. No, uh, get rid I'm of I'm trying to mute your other one so it's it doesn't create that echo. So hold on. I got it. How's that? Can you guys all hear me now? I hear you. Okay, good. Yeah, because uh, my computer is frozen, but the volume, the voice is still coming out of it. So I can't reduce the volume in any way. So I'm on my phone and the computer's right there. Okay. So I was really on a good track and it pissed me off. What happened? What was I saying before I got interrupted? Ryan, quit laughing at me. You're talking about the C plus light or C plus effort and uh, A plus life. Right. Uh, oh yeah. So I was saying like that furrowed brow I was talking about when you're driving and, and that whole idea is yes, without knowing your brain in 85% of the cases is going to go into a negative sort of depressing area. But if you've got an alarm that's set, for every, let's say hour and a half or two hours. And it's playing a song when it goes off that you love, like you're never gonna be grumpy when you're listening to the song, something that would bring you out of it. And if you're in a good mood already when it happens, then you might just start shaking your body or dancing, who knows? But man, if you're grumpy and that goes off, it, I've had it help me hundreds of times in my life to remind me that it's just because of my own mind and my own crap going through my head and I can, I can change just simply by shifting my attitude in that moment. So it might be something for us all to consider as we, because this is a, both a very emotional and loving and fun time of the year, but it's also can carry a lot of stress with it. So very important that you start putting little things in place like that now. And if, then you forget about them, right? They're in, your, they're in your phone and then they all of a sudden, boom, the song starts going off and you're you know happier than ever. So, um, and then there's like, there, there's a lot of them. You'd be surprised. Like one of mine that does that for me is, believe it or not, Toby Keith, How Do You Like Me Now? And um, that song, if you listen to the words and you didn't make it about him and a girlfriend and you made it about you, How Do I Like Me Now? Right? That's when I first heard that song. That's what struck me, you know, was How Do I Like Me Now? Uh, I love the song. I think it's great. I was kind of the nerd in high school. 
he was the nerd in school and she ignored him. But, but for me, I turned it around. I actually did a very, uh, an hour and a half motivational speech once up, uh, up in Redding, California to about 300 people. And I started it with that song. And I said, what if you, you know, listen to the words, we didn't have the video going, we had the words going up as he sung it. I said, what if you use the words, right? Um, as a, a way of saying, how do I like me now? Am I becoming the person I really wanted to become? So there, yeah, I've got a lot of them. Um, the, um, uh, I forget if it's uh, the band Perry or Katy Perry, but called uh, If I Die Young. Um, if, you if you listen to the words, if I die, do you guys, most of you know that song? If you don't know that song, it's, it was one of the biggest hits the year. Okay. Yeah. You gotta yeah. sing it for us, Rick. The band Perry. The band Perry, Carolyn, you're a riot. <laughs> but the first words, if I die young, bury me in satin. And if you listen to the words, one of my favorite spots there, um, one of the favorite, uh, it's something about everything I never did is done. Meaning you're, you're dead, right? You're not gonna get to do all those things, it's done. Uh, and, and the part about the advice, you know, um, when people want your advice, you know, all the advice that you were giving Funny how, what she say in the song, funny how people start listening. Now that you're a goner, people start listening. And if you go through all those words, just don't put the song on, but have the lyrics going and read them. Another one is Brave by Sarah, Sarah Bareilles, I think. And that one, if you listen, she said, uh, show me, show me you're brave, show me you're strong. Like, don't let the words get caught inside you because they'll make you sick. Those are, all of those things can help us right this minute, especially during the month of gratitude and the holiday season. Very important to do that. So that's what I would do. I'd have different songs come pop up about six times during the day, and it would really put me in an upbeat, positive attitude about what's possible. So, all right. My, my go-to contribution of that same uh, mentality is uh, Dirty Heads Vacation. That song always puts me in it. And, and if you listen to the words and don't think of vacation, like in it, it talks about basically working hard so that he got to a point where his work was enjoyable. Like it's, it's a very motivational, um, more modern, uh, kind of like a reggae kind of music, but it, it is upbeat and definitely every time I hear it, it brings, brings my spirit up. And it has the principle from uh, Saved by the Bell, since we're sticking with the, uh, you know, Mario Lopez uh, theme. Okay, can you put the name of the song in the chat? It's just called Vacation by Dirty Heads, but yeah, I will. Oh. Oh, it was, okay, I thought you said Vacation Dirty Heads by someone no, else. No, Dirty, Dirty Heads is the band. The song is oh. called Vacation. Okay. And there's a, a video version where the, the principal from Saved by the Bell sings the, like, mouths the words to the lyrics. Yeah. Uh, and so it's one of those, uh, if you listen to the words, it's it's upbeat, but it also has sound like life advice in it too. Okay, I like that. All right. Okay, well, I, I, that's all I've got for today. I hope it's something that you guys can use to, um, you know, to move you forward till next week. Definitely keep the dates down. Let's, uh, let's get, uh, uh, start reaching into your groups, talking to people you know at EXP and say, let's, uh, Let's start off the year with a great ramp, but definitely I hope you guys will be on the calls for both the uh, uh, 19th and the third, and then again on the 17th, okay? Will you post in the Rick for a Ramp uh, Facebook group the dates for everything? Yes, we will be doing that this Monday for sure. Thank you. You're welcome. Sorry I didn't get to see you at convention. I, did get to see I wasn't there. I stayed home. I'm, I'm pushing for icon, so I got to get two more people under contract. He told me. Yeah, I was proud yeah. of you. That's yeah. All right. Uh, I went to the Icon breakfast, Carolyn, and it was, there was over 1,200 people there and the acoustics were not good. I got, you know, I got a <laughs> there, but I didn't, I didn't hear a word that was coming from the stage. So. <laughs> yeah, the referrals are so worth it. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you next Friday at the same time and reach out if you need anything. All right. All right. Thanks, Rick. All right. Bye-bye.